Hey guys, this is John. Welcome back to the channel. You saw right, we were switching gears here. We're going from a Colnago to a Raleigh. This is a classic 1983 Prestige Grand Sport. And uh, it's from 1983. It's got some SunTrust Superb on it. A little mixture of parts, Superb hubs, which is cool. What we're gonna do with this thing is we are going to take this thing apart. We're gonna rebuild the hubs, rebuild the headset, rebuild the bottom bracket, and change the chain. Why? There's no blink to it. And uh, these things are decent bikes. They perform well. They fit a price point, and this one's actually really cool. Well, let's do a quick review of this bike. We have some mystery tubing, the 555 Rally tubing, with a chrome head tube and fork. Uh, we got a little panograph here on the seat stay, which is kind of cool. We have a Suntour Superb drivetrain, front and rear derailleurs and shifters, as well as the hubs. We've got some SR kind of aero looking cranks. We've got some aero array of rims. We got the AGC Aero brakes. Boy, this thing's so aerodynamic. And a generic saddle that's going to go, pink hoods that's going to go, and your uh, SR bar and stem labeled Raleigh. This should turn out pretty good. So, we're going to start out taking this thing apart and have a little discussion while we're doing, have a little bit of fun, settle in for a little bit of comfort TV, and uh, we'll have a good time. We'll knock this thing out within a half hour. Well, half hour of your time, uh, not a half hour of my time. The bicycle itself is in great shape. I got it from my neighbor, Peter, here at the garage. And uh, he just walked in with this thing and said, hey, would you put this in your, your bike museum? I'm like, absolutely. I don't have a bike like this. And uh, these bikes were gorgeous. In the day, they would take Suntour Superb, mix it with a little bit of Seguino crank action here, mix it with some Diacom brakes. That was a common thing in the 80s. I have so, several of them. I got a couple back there from Schwinn. But this was unique. It had a chrome head tube, chrome fork, and with the, uh, the 555 Raleigh mystery tubing, made to look like a Reynolds sticker. They weren't fooling anyone. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take this thing apart. Now these cables are actually in good shape. Well, they were. We're actually gonna use this rear cable in the front. And uh, the reason we're doing that is because it is in good shape, but it's too short for the rear when I, when I route the cables the way I think they should be routed. Hey, I want to thank all you guys for your comments on, as to what color to tape this thing. I made a decision, but guess what? I'm going to make you wait to see the decision I made a little bit later in the video when I tape this thing. Some of you may not like it. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's going to go. Say goodbye to the pink. It's gone, boys and girls. Not a fan. Now, that was the thing back in the day. I was in high school when this bike came out. We were buying pink polo shirts to show that we were cool. Yeah, I had a pink polo shirt. It's all right. I think it's back in style, isn't it? You know, I'm all over YouTube, and I'm looking at other people that do what I do online. And these guys have millions of views and hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? And what's funny is they don't talk at all during their videos. They call it ASMR, like it's supposed to relax you or something. And it's like, nah, I don't want to do that. I really love this Suntour Superb stuff. What people don't know is at the time, this was probably the best shifting derailleur in the market. Better than Campagnolo, even better than Shimano. And uh, people would be shocked to hear that. They thought, oh, you gotta spend the big money on Campagnolo. But no, but if you have an old Suntour Superb or Cyclone system, it's probably the best shifting of its day. Well, now, guys, I already have my replacement chain. Uh, those of you who know my channel know what it's going to be. Uh, Say this sport. Uh, why? Best shifting chain I ever used, quietest chain I ever used, and it's silver. I like bling. Now, these parts don't need too much cleaning, but it's a lot easier to clean them up when they're off the bike. And I also give the frame a good polish. Man, I love this thing. Check that out. Woo! Now, the Suntour Superb and Cyclone are very similar in a sense that you got this, what they call endless strap, and you just loosen this bolt, and the front derailleur comes off. And then, after that, you have to take that off. That takes a really high-tech 
Phillips screwdriver. Don't lose this. If you lose this, you're losing the derailleur. And there'll be some spring tension behind it. There we go. And then your strap, it's got a, there's a lot of dust, so be really careful so you don't scratch everything as you take it off. There you go. It's the moment of truth. Oh, it feels like garbage. Oh. Hear it? That feels really bad. Oh, I have an idea. Tell me what you think of this. That, my friends, is a Suntour Superb Crank. I've been holding on to this forever, wondering what I'm going to do with it. This might be the perfect deal. I got superb hubs, derailleurs, shifters. How about a crank? The only concern is I need a shorter bottom bracket spindle or, or superb bottom bracket. I'm gonna go home. I think I might have that. Let me, let's check my stash. Okay guys, let's check out the carnage. Oh, that was loose. First of all, that's not good. Not good at all. All right, here we go with my 30 year old cheap spanner wrench. All right, you're seeing this the same time I am. Oh, let's see. Huh, dryness. Dirt. No bottom bracket sheath. Let's see what we got here. Ready? Let's look. Basic, basic scoring. No pits. Hmm. Some of you guys see me use this last video. All it is is a, a bolt and, and two washers. You could get them at your local hardware store. It you from whacking your knuckles into something where you're loosening the fixed cup. Now this is an English threaded bottom bracket, which means it's gonna go, it's opposite thread. So it's righty loosey, lefty tighty. I even know I have a hard time saying it. Say that really fast. Yeah. Put it in there, kind of snug. There you go. Oh, come on. It's not even tight. Normally fixed cups are pain. This one's coming right out. Hello! Yep, no, bo no bottom bracket sheath. Here's your cup. Old goo, that's all it is, old goo. Do you even have to hit the wedge? It's pretty clean. Looks like we have ourselves some Raleigh branded aluminum bars with a nice little Raleigh etch. I don't know if you can see that. A Raleigh etch. And it looks like an SR stem, one of the nicer polished ones. Okay, unfortunately, this was loose too. Headset feels like it's grinding, literally grinding. This little spinner ring was loose. Everything was loose on this thing. Don't know about y'all. I don't have a wrench this big. Not for working on bikes anyway. So we got our handy dandy adjustable deal here. For all I know, these are loose bearing, I'm not sure. Yeah, those are loose bearings, so they're gonna go everywhere. Oh, there goes one, there goes two. I'm gonna tighten that back up. All right, got a towel there. Hopefully it keeps them from rolling. <laughs> Lands on my hand. It, it's the bottom ones that are gonna go everywhere, ready? Well, a lot of them stayed on the fork. Well, the cups are just like this cup here. Um, it's goo, like gooey goo. Now, if this was my bike back in the 80s, I probably would have put a Tangi Levin headset, not E11, but Levin, L-E-V-A, I-N-E-N, Levin. And, cause it looked like the Campagnolo and, but it cost very little money. I think wholesale cost is 10 bucks, something silly. But they were chrome, they looked like the campy headset, 
and that's what I would do. But now we're going to keep this one stock. Well, she's apart. It doesn't take long. I'm just excited that this thing is in great shape. I think by the time I'm done polishing it up, she's going to look darn well new, like new-ish. Okay, guys, well, it's time to go home. We're going to take these wheels. We're going to overhaul them there. We're going to take off the cog, and we're going to clean that up as well. Uh, let you know what we have here. We have some Suntour Superb um, hubs. We got some Araya Aero rims that were pretty popular for their day. And uh, these Continentals, I'm just shocked. I'm gonna call Peter and see how long he's had these things because they've held up really, really well. So, in a snap, we'll be in my basement. Nope, you don't wanna be here. Yep, much warmer in here, this is better. Uh, we have a snow day today. It's uh, Tuesday and it's blustering cold. So we could actually overhaul some hubs and uh, clean up that cog. That's the view out my basement window. We got a bunch of fresh snow today. Uh, so yeah, beautiful day to work in the shop. Pardon the mess, getting ready for a bike swap. You know, I just spun the axles. They actually feel pretty good. I, you know, I have to look at this thing to see how messy it. Oh, what's going on here? Ah, look at that. This is one of those with the really thick. Oh, look, it's loose. <laughs> All right, we're overhauling this thing. It's loose. Well, it feels smooth, but like everything else on this bike, look at this. It's loose. Didn't even need a wrench. If you don't have an axle vise, it's a good idea. Let's take a peek in there together. <laughs> it is very dry, very dry. Let me get this dust cap off. Well, I was wrong. It wasn't dry. It just said all the grease has coagulated and uh, is it's kind of mucky here, so. Yeah, it looks pretty dirty. Actually, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Don't see any scoring, no pits. We're in great shape. The dust caps are in great shape, still shiny. I like new. Let's put in some new Philwood grease. It's my favorite. Coming out like it usually does. Actually running low. You know you work on a lot of bikes when you have to keep buying new grease. We're gonna go with new ball bearings. Why? Because we can. Nothing worse than old balls. No joke, please. Well, the races look pretty clean. They got the minor scoring on there, but no pits. The dust cap. All these snap in really nice. We got dual 14s. Gonna, it feels snug. I back it off. Tighten them together. Let's check it. It feels just a hair loose, and I understand that's what I want anyway. Because when you, when you tighten that skewer, it compresses everything. Uh, you know, I'll just be sure to check it once it's on the bike. But yeah, just a smidge loose. But that's kind of what we want. You know, I really love the hardware. I love it when. Uh, Suntory uses the chrome. Fancy. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make you sit through that again. Front wheel's just like the rear wheel. You know, some of my YouTuber friends could relate. Doing some work without the camera rolling almost seems odd, like I'm doing something wrong. It's like I go to do something, it's like, oh, I got to move the camera. And it's like, no, you don't. You're doing it off camera, so it doesn't matter. Actually in good shape. Just a few adjustments. Onward and upward, on to the next thing here. Let's get this cog all cleaned up. Well, it really looks good with proper lighting. Check that out, huh? Got fancy little light. Um, yeah, if you don't have one of these freewheel vices, you should get one. And uh, it holds on to the, the biggest cog, so you could loosen them one at a time. This is going to take some grunts. Ready? One, two. Ah, there we go. Yes. 
One. All right. Yep. That was easy. A little spacer here. That lifts off. And last one's a spacer too. Now when you're done, make sure you lay them out in order. So therefore, when you put them back together, you know the way it went back together. Yeah, these just clean up really nice. This thing really has very little wear to it. Let's clean them all up. I'll get it back together. Well, look at that. Looks good. We made room for new dirt. Well, you might recall when we thought about switching to the superb crank, but here's an existing spindle. And while I was at Millray Cyclery, I went through their archives. They have this used spindle sitting around. And look at that, guys. It's shorter. I think it's going to work. On the drive side, we have from the end of the bearing race to the end of the spindle. As you can see, I got 35.12 right in that little neck of the woods, right? This one here, we got 30. You know, that might just be the ticket. So, five millimeters further in might just be it. You know what, guys? I've been looking at this bike for um, you know a few years now. I have two of them. Now, this one is not my size. It's too tall. It's a Viscount Aerospace. It doesn't have the death fork. And I'm going to give it away. Now, my email is on the front page of YouTube. And if you live in the Chicagoland area and you're able to come to my house, I'll give it to you. It's first come, first serve. Um, it's a great bike. Now, the only caveat is I am keeping the Barcon shifters. And we could probably find another set of shifters for you. So, uh, first come, first serve. Drop me an email. All right. We're done with the wheels. Uh, let's get back to the shop. And just like that, we're back in the shop. We're going to polish this thing up and we're going to put her back together. This thing is literally in perfect shape. You're not going to see a lot of scrubbing in this video. Um, I think the chrome meat needs a little bit of chrome polish. But other than that, guys, this is a piece of cake. This thing was babied, I think. He must have kept this in his bedroom at night. I don't know, but it looks really, really good. Look at this mess. <laughs> That's much better. Let's clean up this bottom bracket. Pretty easy cleanup job. All right, let's torque this to three, four grunts. Ready? Oh, there you go. One big grunt. That's it. That's all you're getting. One big grunt. Well, look at that, guys. Perfect. What are the chances of a bike shop that doesn't deal with vintage stuff having one spindle at a bottom of a drawer and it fits perfectly? <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Thanks, Bruce. I don't care who you are. That's pretty right there. That's a nice upgrade. So the superb rear derailleur really doesn't look that, that bad at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pulleys off, uh, clean them up because they feel a little mucky. But you know what, look at that. I'm just gonna wipe it off and maybe a little bit of polish.
Make room for a little new dirt and we'll be okay. I don't know if this thing has any miles on it. Now earlier I said that the Superb was probably the best shifting derailleur in 1983. Uh, if you disagree with that, put it in the comments section. I'd like to know what you think uh, was the best shifting derailleur. Let's go. Front driller is a little messier. We'll just have to clean that up. Back in uh, the day when I was 17, that was 100 years ago, I got my first bike with Suntour Cyclone parts. And the front driller is very similar to this. Very similar to this. And I was so excited when I polished it up and you'd see that shine. Because, you know, I had Altus parts. I had some lower end stuff, you know. Not much expectations, but boy, I just thought I was happening when I got that Suntour Cyclone derailleur. So I'm going to take my approximate position there. I'm going to take a piece of tape, put it right there, and that's going to tell me where to put this strap. So here's an approximate location for this thing. I just didn't want to go scraping it all the way up and down the, 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 the frame here. So it's a little bit of a juggling act. To hold on to that. Oh, look at that. I did pretty well. I've done this before. However, it's been decades. So before I tighten it up, so I'll aim this thing up and I'll say, ah, pretty darn close. With that strap loose, I'm actually going to put this on lightly. Lightly. I'm going to aim it. Raise it up to where I think it needs to be, which is right around there. Okay. I'm going to take that off, tighten this screw, put this back on. Now look at it. I did pretty good there. I think I'm in the right place. And we can put that wheel back on. Let's put this back on. I did add some lube to the wedge and some lubricant around the stem. I'll straighten it out once it's on the ground. Shifters honestly were in great shape. I didn't really have to do anything to them. Well, it looks like I'm not a brake cables. We have to head to the bike shop in this beautiful weather and get me some. Welcome to the first snowstorm of the year. Great day to go to a bike shop. Turning into the shop right here, it looks like we have a camera crew talking about the weather, or maybe the river's running high, I don't know. And Take a good look at this shop, guys. You're gonna see it recreated with Lego. There we go. Man, this weather sucks. <laughs> There's my boy Chris. Hey, hey, my man, how you doing? Hey, John, how are you? Great. This is Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, um, hey, um, I need two brake cables uh, and uh, 10 of those tubes again, the short valve ones. Cool, let me get those for you. Awesome, thanks. Yes, 10 of them. Guys, I gotta go through tubes, a couple cable edge. Awesome. Hey, by the way, Chris has a YouTube channel and I will link it down below and you'll see it right here above uh, his head. Awesome. Check Thanks. Cool. Hey, come on upstairs. Check this place out. It's kind of cool. That's Bruce, the owner. Here we go. He's running. Yeah, not a lot of business when it's uh, snowing like this yeah. outside. Um, yeah, he carries specialized. He got some Marin. Check this out. Chris built this. This is the actual bike shop made out of Lego. Tell me that's not the, the coolest thing. Here are the owners, meet Bruce and Karen. Bruce, this is perfect likeness of you right here. Coffee cup in hand. <laughs> yep, awesome. I love this thing, this is great. Hey guys, let me take the time here to ask you to support your local bike shop. 
They do the service, they do the rides, they really need your support. Love the jerseys here because he doesn't just promote a shop, he promotes the local towns here. I was in the shop too long. Look how much snow there is now. Heading home. Hey, what do you guys think about that seat on there? It looks pretty cool, you know? Kind of a rare seat. I've been sitting on this for a while. Uh, pun intended. Now when a diet comp uh, arrow breaks, the levers, you have this ferrule. And I wasn't paying attention when I was taking apart the bike and I almost lost both of them. But they were sitting on the floor. As a surprise to nobody, the pink hoods are gone. So I decided to run the cables on the inside, uh, probably because I'd done probably a thousand bikes that way uh, when I was at a shop. It looks more aero, not that I care about aero, but it looks cool. Well, I get a little bit of grief whenever I run the tape from the top down, and I should, uh, unless I'm using cello tape or black cloth. That's the only stuff I run from the top down. Everything is from the bottom up, and I tape the top. That's the proper, in my opinion, proper way to do it. But when it comes to this stuff, it does not slide down the bar. Uh, I think it looks better, and it works just fine. So this is what we're doing. Yellow, I decided to go with yellow. It uh, was my, my favorite choice. It was the second most popular choice uh, on the comments section in the last video. And, uh, you know, I just, I just like it. I think it, look, it really brightens the bicycle up. And uh, you'll see when it's done, especially with that yellow saddle. Now, in terms of cable length, I make it so I could uh, turn the wheel all the way without kinking the cable. The reason why is it's going to happen. So, you know, you, you, the bike falls, whatever, you want to have that kind of range. Now you can see by the way I ran this, I ran uh, the cable right out the top here. But on this side, I ran it out early. And the main reason why I did that is because the angle in which it approaches and the, the barrel adjuster. So I ran it a little long so someone could raise the stem. Uh, but yeah, it looks okay. Wow, okay. Pretty stressed, look what happens. I'm already bottomed out. All that cable in here has to seat into the ferrule that seats into the lever. And you're always gonna get a nice seating job in there. You gotta tighten that cable up. All right, stay with us guys, we're almost done. All we have to do is string this baby up. We're coming down to the wire. Sorry. Uh, and uh, put some pedals on, put the saddle on, and we're good to go. Boink, 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 boink. You know, I really love the way this thing turned out. The Superb crank upgrade was apopo. The Suntour Superb uh, drivetrain is awesome. The aero brakes uh, are pretty cool. The seat is perfect, and I think the handlebar and tape worked out well. You have perfect decals uh, all the way around. Let me know what you think of the handlebar and seat change. Uh, just love the whole chrome front end. It just makes it unique. Even that uh, fake uh, Reynolds sticker right there. But uh, yeah, I think it turned out well. I can't wait to ride it. Is this an old Schwinn with a kickstand plate? Nope. Hey guys, this is the bike I'm gonna take to the Auburn Cord Show. This is beautiful. We are gonna go over this Jack Taylor, uh, complete touring bike with some really unique features. 
and uh, I'm excited. We're going to bring this bike to the Auburn Cord Museum for a show coming up in June. Hey guys, this is a 3D event between uh, June 7th and 9th. Uh, it's going to be a bike show, a swap meet. They're going to have seminars. Uh, on top of that, you're in the Duesenberg Museum. You're going to see Cords, Duesenbergs, Auburns, things like that. I know there's banquets that are going to be available to you. Uh, check this out. It's in Auburn, Indiana. And just go to ClassicBicyclesAuburn.com and check it out. And yeah, I think I found a use for this crank. Because it's lighter. Because it has holes. Hey guys, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video and uh, watching the whole build. Now coming up, we got that Jack Taylor. And also, as of next weekend, the 20th, there's a bike swap. We're gonna do a video there. We're gonna have a little conversation with Richard Schwinn. Oh, I'm excited about that. We're gonna learn about what he's up to and where he's going uh, for the future. So, kinda excited. And in the month of February, we are going to uh, have a party here at the garage. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We've done it the last couple of years. I'll link a couple of videos down below from the last couple of events. And we have to limit the amount of people that come, but it's sure gonna be a lot of fun. So if you think you can make it, we're in Naperville, Illinois, uh, just check out my email, it's on the front of the page, and drop me a line on the email, we can talk about it. Uh, that's just gonna be a whole a hoot. We're gonna have some food, just some, we're gonna geek out on some old bikes. We're gonna display bikes here, including your own, if you can bring it along, and it should be a ton of fun. Well. That's about it. Thanks for sticking out to the end. We'll see you next video.